Good morning, class 11. A very warm welcome. Today we are going to discuss about the laws of chemical combination. So the topic is law of chemical combination. Keep in mind we have four laws in our syllabus. The first law is law of conservation of mass, which is given by Antony Libosier. What about this law? This law says that the total mass in a chemical reaction is always conserved. Means total mass of reactants, or we say total mass of the product, is always equal to total mass of products. That means mass can neither be created nor be destroyed. Mass can neither be created nor be destroyed. Or we can say that the mass is always conserved. But in some cases when we do the calculation we get a very small difference in masses. Why that difference comes? Sometimes the mass of the product is slightly less than the mass of the reactant. Now the question arises that in these type of cases whether the law of conservation of mass is obeyed or not. Keep in mind all the chemical reactions they obey law of conservation of mass except nuclear reactions. In nuclear reactions law of conservation of mass is not obeyed because there are some other reactions which takes place. So total mass of the reactant is always equal to total mass of the product and if there is a slight difference in the mass of the reactant and the product it means that small mass has been converted into energy by the Einstein's mass energy equivalence which states that delta E or we say E is equal to delta M into C square this is called delta M delta M means mass difference so this equation is called Einstein's mass energy equivalence which simply states the mass and energy are interconvertible. Mass can be changed into energy and energy can be converted into mass. But till now we have learned only we have practically used only one concept that is conversion of mass into energy but we are unable to convert energy into mass but hopefully this will happen in future so you can see the law of conservation of mass which is given by Lavoisier. the total mass in a chemical reaction is always conserved means there is no loss of mass and if there is a slight loss of mass it means energy is produced so let us discuss now the second law now the second law is known as law of definite or law of constant proportion this law is applicable for all kind of molecules except pseudo molecules so let us see what this law has to say. Law of definite proportion or law of constant proportion simply says that when a pure substance is formed, two or more elements combine in a fixed or constant proportion by mass. So law of definite proportion says a pure chemical compound a pure chemical compound is always formed by combining of same elements
in a definite proportion in definite or constant proportion by mass what does it means we have given the definition that whenever two or more atoms combine in a fixed proportion by mass we get a pure substance how to explain let us take a very simple example water water you take from any source whether you are taking water from a river from ocean from sea from a rain or whatever water you get always keep in mind in water hydrogen has a mass 2 g and oxygen has molar mass that is 30 or sorry here oxygen is 16 g so it's always one ratio is by mass so whenever hydrogen and oxygen combine in a fixed ratio that is one ratio a we always get water similarly let us see what happens when we get carbon dioxide carbon dioxide we can get in various ways by burning coal by burning charcoal by burning wood petroleum etc so carbon dioxide if we get from different sources the formula remains the same and the formula of carbon dioxide is co2 let us see whether they have a definite proportion by mass or not carbon molar mass is 12 g oxygen molecule that is 32 g when we find the simplest ratio is 3 ratio a so law of definite proportion simply states whenever carbon dioxide is formed from any source carbon and oxygen they must combine in the ratio 3 ratio a by mass which is a fixed value you cannot change this ratio if you change the ratio then the product of a say the compound changes so law of definite proportion was given by joseph prost which states that a pure substance is formed when the elements combine in a fixed ratio by mass now we are moving towards third law now we have law of multiple proportion this is third law of chemical combination which is given by dalton very very important law of multiple proportion simply says that when two elements combine to form more than one compound then the mass of the one element which combine with the other mass of the other element always bears a simple whole number ratio see here when two elements combine to form more than one compound then the mass of the one element which combine with the fixed mass of the other element are in simple whole number ratio what does it mean let us see this definition let's take carbon dioxide and we take carbon monoxide both are the compounds of carbon and hydrogen carbon oxygen carbon monoxide carbon o2 carbon dioxide mass of carbon here is 12 g mass of oxygen in this o2 means 16 into 2 32 g mass of carbon here again 12 g because we have only one carbon and the mass of carbon is 12 and the mass of oxygen here is 16 g law of multiple proportion says if we keep the mass of the one element fixed then the mass of the other elements which combine with the fixed mass of this element always 
there's a simple whole number ratio. Now let's see. 12 gram, 12 gram carbon mass fix. If we keep the mass of carbon 12 gram, then what is the ratio of oxygen? So ratio of oxygen in both the cases is first case oxygen is 32 gram and second case oxygen is 16 gram. So it's 2 ratio 1. Here the thing which we have to keep in mind is we have to keep the mass of one element constant. In this case the mass of carbon is kept fixed that is 12 gram. Let us take another case. We take a very simple example of water and hydrogen peroxide. Water H2 and hydrogen peroxide H2O2. H2O2 is called hydrogen peroxide and H2O is called water. If we see the masses of different elements combined here, 2 gram hydrogen, 16 gram of oxygen, and here 2 gram of hydrogen and 32 gram of oxygen. So we can see in these two compounds H2O, 2 gram of hydrogen combined with 16 gram of oxygen. 2 gram of hydrogen combined with 32 gram of oxygen. One thing keep in mind, two or more elements. The element should be same in both the compounds. You cannot say that here we take water and here we take H2SO4. No, it's wrong. The same elements combined, that must be kept in mind. Here, hydrogen oxygen, hydrogen oxygen. If the mass of hydrogen is kept constant, 2 gram, 2 gram is fixed. Now what is the ratio of mass of oxygen? 16 ratio 32. So what is the answer? 1 ratio 2. That is law of, you say, what was this law? Given by Dalton, known as law of of multiple proportion. So this is law of multiple proportion. Now the last law, the fourth one is law of reciprocal proportion given by Richter. Let us see the last law. Fourth law. Law of reciprocal Proportion given by Richter R I C H P E. Someone says Richard. Now we have the last law, law of reciprocal proportion given by Richard. It simply states when two different elements, now keep in mind. When we did the law of multiple proportion, we write when two same elements, two or more same elements. But here we are saying when two different elements combine separately with a third mass, third element whose mass is kept fixed, then the ratio in which the elements combine with the fixed mass always where it's a simple whole number ratio or they always combine in the same way as they combine directly. How to explain? Let us see. We have three elements A, B and C. Now they are saying if A combined with B and B also combined with C. Keep in mind A combined with B and C also combined with B. If the mass of B is kept constant, means if we fix the mass of 
B. Then the ratio of the mass of A and C is always a simple whole number ratio or they acquire the same ratio when they combine directly with C. This is known as law of reciprocal proportion. Again, when two elements, two different elements combine with a fixed mass of the third element, then they always do so to acquire the same ratio when those two elements combine together or they always bear a simple whole number ratio. With this, we have done all the four laws of chemical combination. We will discuss the numerical next time to give you a clear idea about all these four laws. Law of conservation of mass is very easy. You have to calculate mass of the product and calculate mass of the reactant. You will find that both the masses become equal. Now, we will discuss law of definite proportion, law of multiple proportion and law of reciprocal proportion once again and we will discuss the numerical based on these formulas and how to apply these laws. So till the time, just revise, take care, thank you.